Getting home to your dog is a pretty regular task that we all look forward to. Well, two distant strangers uses this seemingly mundane gesture to reevaluate how the black community is viewed by the very people sworn to protect society, and it makes for a frightening thought experiment for the audience. Up against the wall for me. What? I'm good actually, man. I'm not good. Listen, man. Give me the bag. A racist cop, an innocent black man, a dog, and a time loop are all elements that make up the plot, and they are more than enough to make this movie stand out. So, without further ado, let's talk about that ending, shall we? Call you? Ew, tax first. Okay. Spoilers ahead. Carter, a graphic designer, spends the night with Perry and has to go home to his dog the next day. After he leaves Perry's apartment, Carter smokes a cigarette on the sidewalk and accidentally bumps into a man, spilling the latter's coffee. My fuck? bad, dude. I, did, I totally did not see you. Jesus. Listen. Just then, a police officer named Merck approaches Carter and questions him about the contents of the cigarette and a wad of cash that fell from Carter's bag. By the end of this interaction, Merck, along with other cops, restrains Carter with his knee in a manner quite similar to how George Floyd was subdued. Shouting I can't breathe, which is an obvious homage to Eric Garner's death, Carter dies due to the use of excessive force. He then wakes up in Perry's bed with the feeling of deja vu. After a few more incidents, Carter soon realizes that he is stuck in a time loop. No matter what precaution he takes, Carter meets the same fate eventually. After 99 iterations of his death, he decides to approach Officer Merck. See the corner? Cute couple about to kiss. Boom. Yoga girl about to take a selfie. Will Carter be able to secure his safety? Can Carter break the time loop? When Carter approaches Merck, the latter cannot fathom that they are stuck in a time loop. He seems to understand Carter's predicament and even agrees to drop the protagonist home. The car ride also makes for an interesting one. It's really illegal for me to ride in the front. After all, while Carter points out how institutionalized racism and other factors have really impacted the black community, Merck feels as though each individual is responsible for their own actions. I think I like it, but I think it was just sex for her. I don't hear a problem yet. <laughs> the two individuals then agree to disagree. As Carter and Merck finally reach the former's place, things seem to end on a good note. Just then, Merck starts clapping and calls the protagonist's performance the best of the bunch before he shoots Carter. Whoa! Best of the bunch! Whoa! The bunch! Merck then tells Carter, see you tomorrow. Evidently, Merck has always been aware of the loop, and it seems, in a twisted way, that the cop enjoys these fatal interactions that he has with Carter. Look, I realize now, it don't matter what I say or what I do or how I try to do it, this dude just want, he just want to kill me. But needless to say, Carter doesn't share the same sense of elation as the cop. It is imperative for the black protagonist to break the cycle and escape his tormentor. In essence, the only way Carter can escape this time loop is by actually surviving, and it is clear that Merck won't really let that happen. Although Carter vows to never give up and promises to work on finding a solution, there is something else that needs our immediate attention, the very purpose of the time loop. Before we can discuss if Carter will be able to break the loop, we need to talk about the time loop itself. Back? Wanna use my gun? What? No. As a rhetoric device, it serves to highlight just how many black individuals have been killed while doing some rather regular and non-threatening activity, like eating ice cream. Moreover, it pertinently points out that, while some conditions may change, it always involves the same basic factor, police brutality against the black community. You can change the names of both the individual and the cop, you can change the location they're in, and you can even try to ameliorate the situation and provide proper justification for your actions. But if the cop is a racist, then the outcome will most likely not be any different. Don't you out a wee bit too much, but this one, my friend, oh, this one was a noble performance. Best of the bunch.
Be it because of a gunshot or because the cop knelt on someone's neck, the black person will be marched to their demise in such situations. All right. Bro. Step against the wall. Why Let go of the bag. Why are you doing Let go of the bag. Are you serious? Let go of your bag. This is my personal Let go. Yes, not all cops are racist, but the ones that are really do torment the black community. This naturally makes us feel as though Carter cannot break the time loop. It is not because he doesn't want to do so, but because Merck will most likely not let that happen. No, 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 no that's bullshit, man. That's nah, bullshit. Man, it's not bullshit. I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying, man. But all I'm saying is, you guys over police our neighborhoods. It seems that for Carter to escape this situation, either Merck needs to let him live willingly, or Carter will have to kill Merck. However, both these situations seem next to impossible. Merck has already established that he will see Carter the next day, thereby confirming that the cop doesn't plan on changing the status quo anytime soon. As for Carter, he could kill Merck in self-defense. But somehow, we don't think it'll lead to the outcome that Carter would want. Lock us up for life for some shit that white boys joke about in their memoirs, and then we're stuck in a cycle we can't even fucking break. Come on, man, everyone's responsible for their choices. Sure, the graphic designer may be able to escape the loop, but it will, more likely than not, land him in jail, since no one will really buy the self-defense claims. In conclusion, although Carter is optimistic that, one day, he will be able to escape this predicament, it seems as though he would actually need Merck to cooperate as well. After all, it takes two to tango.